Welcome to part 35. In this video, it's time to move on to building up functionality that actually allows us to edit these content areas. In the last video, we covered how to get the content from the database and create it, but now we want to actually connect these content areas and place the contents within this content field and be able to edit them. So the first change I'm going to make is I want to update the content within these text areas to reflect the proper content that appears in the database. So I'm going to open up edit.php and rather than saying content here, I'm going to use a function that we created in the last video. And to do that it's going to be fp cms load underscore block. And I'll pass in the id variable. So I'll save that. If we go back and preview You'll notice these fields are now blank. And uh, just to test it slightly more thoroughly, if you open up uh, Firefox and take a look at PHP My Admin, I'm going to update one of the fields. Um, say I'll update the header field. I'm going to add some test content in. And I go back to Coda, let me refresh the page and make sure this shows up properly. So you'll notice this does now show up in the content block. So the next step in the process is to update our view. And we need to update this Ajax functionality here to make sure that when the form submits we redirect it to the correct page and process it properly. So the first step here is to change login. Um, we need to change it to edit instead because that's the ID of our form. And we need to make some changes to the variables here that we are pulling from this form. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a var ID. And within that, I'm going to include some PHP. And I'm going to echo out this, get data, excuse me, uh, parentheses there. And we want to display the block ID. So that is one part. And the next thing is we want to go ahead and rather than using var username, want to set var type. And I'm going to pass in the type ID, which refers to our hidden field here, which has the block type. And then finally, the var content. Can refer to the uh, item with the ID of field. And now it's just a matter of changing the data string to properly reflect these three variables. So I'm going to delete this and we're going to use ID equals plus ID and field equals plus content. and type equals plus the type. Then down here within the Ajax function, um, the type is fine. URL needs to be updated. So that instead is going to go to app CMS edit.php. And everything else here looks fine. So let me save this file. Um, let me make one other change to edit.php. Um, this first if block is supposed to check if the form has been submitted. And if so, I'm just going to echo out some test um, content here. Just so we can test this. So let's go back to test. I'm going to refresh the page. Open up one of these fields. And our color box isn't opening, so let me just double check things. Usually what that means is there's a JavaScript error of some sort. And uh, for Coda, I like using the um, 
JavaScript alert. And it says there's a parse error, so it's probably a missing um, missing semicolon or similar or a quote. Here we go. We're missing a plus here. That's much better. So we have this popping up properly. Let's hit submit, and we do get the form submitted successfully message. So now it's going to be a matter of editing this area here to properly process this form. The first step in doing that is to get the data. So I'm going to create a temporary ID variable, and I'm going to get the ID, the post ID, but first I'm going to clean it. So FP CMS clean block ID like that and then I'm also going to get the type so type equals and uh, just to properly escape that data I'm going to use HTML entities and I'm going to escape post type and as I've done in the past use the int quotes constant and finally a content variable here and that'll be post content and then the next thing we're going to use a function that we haven't created yet but I will in a minute so fp CMS, I'm going to use an update block function. And I'm going to pass in the ID and the content. And finally, we're going to close the light box, or not light box, color box is what we're using, and refresh the page. And to do that, like we did with login.php, I'm going to use fp template. And we're going to load a specific view just for this. And that's within CMS views v underscore saving.php. So um, I guess the next thing I want to do is I'll focus on the update block function and then we'll create the v underscore saving dot php view as the last thing we do in this video. So the update block function will go within our CMS object. And I'll put it down here at the bottom. And uh, this is a pretty simple function, sort of like the create block function above. So we're going to be using prepared statements again. So stmt equals this, fp access the database object, and we'll prepare our statement. And we're going to be using update content. And we'll be setting content equals question mark, where ID equals question mark. And we want to bind the parameters within that SQL statement. So use the bind param function. And both of these variables are strings. So we'll use two S's. A comma and then we'll pass in content and ID and then we'll execute this statement and close the statement like so and um, let me go back to my edit.php. So that takes care of this line. 
And the last change that I want to do is create the v underscore saving.php. And that'll exist within views. This file is basically just a copy of uh, v underscore logging in dot php from within the core folder and views. So I'm going to copy this code and I'm going to paste it into place. And we just need to make a couple changes. Um, let's go ahead and we need the resize, we need the close. We want to remove uh, these two lines. And rather than using window.location equals page, because the page location no, or page variable no longer exists, I'm going to do window.location.reload. That'll take care of the page refresh. And in case I haven't mentioned it already, um, the page refresh is important because we want to make sure that any edits to our content show up within the page. Without the page reload, it's quite possible that the database would be updated, but those changes wouldn't show in place on the page and it might confuse users. So the last change here that I need to make is I want to go ahead and change the header, um, make that edit content block. And I'm going to go ahead and just, re I'm just going to duplicate the header here. So everything inside the H1 tag put that in place. And because we're using get data, I want to make sure we call set data as well. So back to edit.php up here um, right at the top. I'm going to add this. Um, and I guess we need to make sure it appears below this ID variable. So, so that'll give us access to block ID within v underscore saving within our view so it displays properly. And instead of logging in, I'll do saving content block. There we go. So that file is saved. Uh, let's do a quick test. Just close this, excuse me. Well, that obviously didn't work, um, but it seemed like our color box appeared and closed correctly. So I'm going to edit edit.php. Um, let's remove the line here where we load our uh, view. Let's try this again and see if there are any error messages that appear. Oh, and you'll notice we do get one undefined index content. Uh, edit line 12. Let's take a quick glance at this. Um, we're looking for post content and let's check our view. We're passing in ID ah, and we're passing in field not content. So let's change this to field. Let's remove the editing and test this one more time. Much better. So now content is being saved. Um, and you'll notice it's being updated. It updates existing blocks as well.